Recently, I had quite an epiphany that the way I was setting goals and going after goals, uh, probably the last three, four, five, maybe 10 years, is kind of completely wrong. And uh, I'm going to say that with the caveat of, you know, I've been achieving some big, big, big stuff on the business side of things and some other parts of my life, uh, you know, this last five years especially. But on certain parts of my life, I've been struggling big time. Um, the fitness and, and health side of things, I mean, I I eat well, you know, that's, that's not an issue of mine, but I was really, really physically active growing up and, you know, I played sports in college. Then as soon as I got out of college, uh, got in the real world. For some reason, I just couldn't stay active and consistent in uh, my physical activity. So uh, for me, it wasn't gaining weight. It was actually losing weight. It was losing muscle mass that I built up through my uh, years in athletics and stuff. So here's what I want to walk through on this episode of the Carrot Cast. Uh, this is a Trevor Truck Talk driving home right now and uh, have had an amazing week. And part of that is by really tackling this part of my life that I haven't been able to really nail lately. So this is what I want to run by you is we're all taught. And I think most of us do goals, goal setting in this way. We say, here's what I want to achieve and here's what it looks like. And here's by when, when I want to do it. And we put it up there in the wall and those things work, right? Like it's amazing. You have to do that. It works. But the problem is I think we all focus so much on the, what we focus on what it is that we are looking to do instead of focusing on what it is that we need to eliminate that's in our way from getting that, okay? So the reason I say that is this, with the, with that fit that fitness a goal that I've had for years and years, literally every year of the last four years of my life, I've gone into that year saying, okay, this year is gonna be the year that I get back in shape and this is gonna be the year that I become consistently physically active again so I can be healthy for my family and so I can be healthy for um, our team and for myself and just feel better and have more energy and all those kinds of things, right? Because I'm going to need all of those things as I grow and as as um, I wanna become a better father. I've gotta be a great example for my kids and as I become a better leader, there's no way I can, I can ask of my team to have higher energy and to be physically fit and be healthier if I'm not doing it myself, all right? So here's what I did, and I'd suggest you guys all do this. I walked several member, members of my team through this exact same exercise too, um, as they were setting their what we call SMART goals. We set quarterly SMART goals um, for each team member and uh, at least one one personal SMART goal and then two business SMART goals, business related to their role, and then we'll roll it. So here's my version of this. So. For four years, I've been saying I want to be more physically active. I want to work out three times a week. I want to do this. And I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I think many of you can relate to one of those things that you just cannot, for some reason, consistently find success with it. So what I did a month and a half ago, I was fed up. And this wasn't just with this. I was fed up with a couple of other things. I said, okay, this is 100% absolutely going to happen. There's no um, possible way that this isn't going to happen. So the first thing is you got to be convicted. Okay. Oftentimes we don't become truly convicted about those things that we say are important. So truly become, become convicted to the point where you are telling yourself that there is no option to not do this. It's not, well, I need to start working out. I need to start doing this. I need to go out there and make those offers. I need to do this. I need to do that. I still have a lot of, I need the, I, I need to's in my life. And I'm going to be going through this process to eliminate those I need to's and turn them into they're 100% absolutely going to happen. Next, what I did was instead of looking at what I needed to do, because I've been doing that for years, I said, what's currently in my way of doing those consistently? Like, what are the things that consistently block me from doing them? And for me being physically active, it was, man, I just, I never really know what to do in the gym. I'll just go there and probably do the same workout every time and it's never really that good of a workout. So the first thing was knowing what to do and consistently knowing and feeling like I have a good workout program to follow that's actually making a difference, okay? Instead of just checking a box and saying I showed up to the gym. The second thing was I was always making excuses about time. I don't have the time. And oftentimes it was proximity to gym. Now we have a gym across the street from our office, but still there was the excuse that it's dumb, I know, but we all make these dumb excuses. There were those excuses that, well, I'm gonna have to get out of my desk and I'm gonna have to walk across the street and that's gonna take a few minutes. And it wasn't really the time that I didn't feel that I had. It was that 
I wouldn't make the time and make sure that even if I had a good workout plan that day, I wouldn't eliminate the fact that I would get lazy and just choose to work instead of working out. So I had to eliminate that. I had to eliminate any issue with me making an excuse around time and any issue with me being being able to opt out of working out just because of my willpower, okay? The next thing was was uh, accountability. I needed accountability because that last thing, I needed to eliminate any reason for me to be able to opt out of doing it because it was quote unquote inconvenient that day, okay? So those three things were it. Accountability, proximity, and time. And then the last one was, what am I gonna do for my workout? So what I did that day was literally, I became convicted, I'm like, this is, I'm solving this now, this isn't something I'm gonna work on, this isn't something that I'm gonna try to do, I'm solving it today. So I, I, I talked to Jen, my assistant, and said, okay, can you find me three to five personal trainers that match these things, and I want them like really fast. And so she went out there and found some, we narrowed it down to two. One of them was at a gym across the street, that I, or across the town, about 10 minute drive. I'm like, I really, really wanna work out with this person. And I really like the, the camaraderie vibe that they had. Okay, so they were 10 minutes across the town. The other one was a personal trainer that could come anywhere. Okay, they could do it anywhere. They could go to any gym, they could do whatever. The next thing was I said, okay, who can I get to work out with me? Not just a trainer, but who can I get to work out with me? Someone that can motivate me and I can, I can help motivate them and lift them up. Well, there's two of our team members, Sean and Levi, locally that both said they wanted to become more physically active. They needed to lose weight and get back in shape. So I'm like, sweet, I'm gonna wrap them into my scheme. And so I went to talk to them like, all right, are you guys really real about this? Because if you are, I'm gonna pay for a personal trainer and we're gonna make this happen. So cool, so then we started to look at personal trainers. The only thing that hadn't been eliminated yet in all of that, so I got the accountability, okay? The, the only thing that hadn't been eliminated yet, and, and I got the person who could do my workout planning and, and make sure we always had a great workout. The only thing was proximity and having the excuse on time. So we talked to the trainers, both of them. One of them wouldn't leave his gym. The other one could do it anywhere. We're like, sweet. We are creating a gym in our office. And now anyone can do this. So don't think that that sounds fancy or expensive. It's literally a space that we have that we've said now, instead of having a chair here or chairs here, this is workout area. Okay. It's probably 15 by 15, maybe 20 by 20 in our space. We have a big space in the middle of our building. Next, it had to be a place that I had to walk by all the time. Okay. It couldn't be a hidden area for me. I'm like, I need to walk by this. I need to see it. I need to know that when I show up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that my personal trainer is going to be standing in that spot that I have to walk by to get to my office to even get to, to, to start the morning. So I can't have an excuse of, oh, I'm going to pop to the office first and then I'll slink over and do the workouts. Like, no, I couldn't do that. I would have had to work, walk past my trainer in order to get to my office. Okay. And then he just brought normal stuff. He brought kettlebells. He brought some pads to lay on. He brought um, some, some light barbells. He has some uh, mobility things, you know, stretch out muscles. And he has a couple other things in there too. So all that you need for an amazing workout. And that was it. Ever since then, I've been working out three times a week, except for when I've been out, been out of town a little bit. But the funny thing was, that one little shift, even when I was out of town, I was more physically active than I normally am because I started to make that shift. So what in your life can you do to eliminate the things that are in your way of your goals? So don't always look at goals as, I need to do this and how do I do that? Look at goals also as, okay, yeah, I need to do that, but I'm 100% I'm convicted that this is happening, not I need to do it, I'm fully convicted this is happening. The next, go, okay, what are the things that traditionally get in my way of doing those things? Okay, not, oh, willpower, not this. Eliminate willpower, eliminate all those things. Eliminate the factor of even having any willpower being involved in this whole equation. For me, it's not about willpower. I'm going into my office anyway at, at you know, at, uh, at eight o'clock every morning because I drop my kids off at eight o'clock. So I'm gonna go into the office anyway. So our trainer shows up at 8.15. He's ready there with the workout and I can't get to my office without walking by him. There's no willpower involved. I just have to show up, that's it. And not even show up to the workout, I have to show up to my office where I'm already at anyway on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? So that's what I'm trying to get through is, it's not about, oh my gosh, willpower's in my way, it's time is in my way, it's none of those are excuses, okay? Those aren't excuses that are stopping you, those are excuses. What's stopping you is eliminating the roadblocks. How do you 100% guarantee 
the every roadblock has been eliminated between you and that thing. So now willpower is not even an equation. It's working for me in the workout side. I'm going to go through and start knocking other things off in my life. Some really important ones that I've been honestly neglecting are um, uh, things around you know, my wife and relationship there. You know, we have a great, great marriage, but we both need to be way, way more intentional on really ha us having time to pull away for ourselves. So that's my next one. I'm going to be di diving in and going, okay, how do I completely eliminate any possibility that I will not do this, that we will not do this? Not, oh, let's put it in the calendar and say we're going to do it because it's easy to then schedule something over that. How do we 100% guarantee it will happen? Here's a couple ideas I've got and we'll see if it works. So uh, one of them is to set up a recurring scheduled time where our nanny will pick up the kids at a certain time. Okay, it's just pre-scheduled, doesn't change, pick it up. And we have a recurring reservation at this at this very specific place. And um, and that recurring reservation, everything's already prepaid for. So like, it's gonna be really hard for us to slink out of that because then we're losing out on that 50 or 100 bucks for that, pre, that recurring thing. So it could be recurring massages, it could be recurring lunch or recurring dinner or something like that. Um, that, that, that I think could work. We'll see. There's some flaws in there that could get boring doing the same thing every time. Um, there's some other ones where we could find some friends and trade date nights with them or trade date lunches with them and just hold each other accountable for it. But there's still some weakness in that. There's still some, some willpower that we could avoid there or that, that, that might help us avoid that. So I'm going to think about it a little bit more. If you have any suggestions for me, uh, let me know. Hit me up with a comment on this on our blog or head over and email me or find me on Facebook and hit me with a comment. Let me know what you've done to 100% guarantee that you have all the time that you really want and need to invest in that time to grow uh, your marriage with your spouse. Okay, let me know what's working great for you because that's one of the next areas I really, really want to grow in in a massive way and I'm fully convicted it's going to happen. I love your feedback. Hit me up on Facebook, pop me with a message, let me know what you're doing that's working there. And also, uh, go to iTunes and let me know what you have done. Pop a little pop a little thing in the review. I'm pulling that home up to my house right now. Uh, open up the gate. Let me know what you have done uh, to implement this process I'm walking you through. It's almost reverse goals. It's like eliminating roadblocks. Let me know what you've done or just let me know what you think about the podcast. Did you get value from this episode? Did you get value from any other episodes? Let me know because those reviews are the lifeblood of it, y'all. Those reviews are the lifeblood of me wanting to do this and just feeling like I'm really impacting people. So please take the 15 and a half seconds to go over there and do that. I so appreciate you guys. Now let me wrap it with this. Let me wrap it, wrap it with this. Um, I had a really good chance to talk with three of our customers today. I'm gonna start doing more of that, talking with more of our customers on the phone and really helping people out as we're building our team. We're hiring another two people right now. Uh, so that'll push, put us upwards of 16, 17, 18 people, which is gonna be crazy. And so I've still got a big, big, big leadership uh, curve that I'm growing on. But let me know this. What do you wanna grow on this next 12 months? Let me know. What do you want to grow on this next 12 months? I want you to go to Facebook, find me on Facebook or on Instagram. Find me on Instagram, Trevor.Mock, Trevor period, Mock, M-A-U-C-H. Find, find me on Instagram or Facebook and let me know with a DM or post it right on my wall. Please let me know what you want to grow on this next year. And I am going to do podcast episodes on those topics. I'm going to hear, going to be here for you. I'm going to be your personal coach on these episodes. And I'm going to start really ramping up my Instagram and Facebook live game and just showing you behind the scenes of what we're doing and what I'm doing a lot more as we grow this business, but also as I find my way through uh, just living the most amazing life I can possibly live and helping other people's do the people's people's helping other people do the same. All right. Uh, Listen to other episodes of the CarrotCast at CarrotCast.com. Subscribe on iTunes because you get a two-week jumpstart of every episode of the podcast when you subscribe on iTunes versus watching on our blog. And I love you guys. Seriously, um, I really, really am fired up about what I do for a living. And it has nothing to do with generate leads or websites. That's our vehicle. It's this stuff right here. So please give us a review and rating if you love what we're doing. Have a great, great week. And one last thing, shameless plug for Carrot, right? Shameless plug. If you are not growing your leads the way that you want to grow your leads online, 
and you want to really align with the company that can help you do that, the, the company that is the best in the world at helping real estate investors and soon to be agents grow their business and grow their leads online, head over to oncarrot.com forward slash plans or oncarrot.com forward slash demo and take a demo and check out what we have to offer. We have so many new amazing features rolling out. We have thousands of customers that are using us successfully. We want to see you do the same. All right. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.